Hi guys and welcome back to Mommy Tales. So today is the 5th of June and I'm here for the launch. I'm at the Kenya Cultural Center, which is the National Theatre. That's what many of us know it by. And I'm here for the launch of the book Oops by Dr. Zippy Okoth. It's a book that, I, that I've already read. I'm just here for the launch. A very interesting book. Talking about the experiences of Dr. Zippy Okoth. Her experiences through marriage. And that is called The Diary of a Divorced Woman. Please get a copy in case you haven't. In it, you'll see the experiences of maybe one or two or three or even ten women that you know about. It's insightful and it's a very good read. So I would encourage every single woman to get a copy and read for yourself. After writing this book, what did you expect? And yeah, what did you expect from society, from people around you? What I expected uh, is backlash, which I got. And uh, the, the praises came as a surprise. For me, it was therapy. I wanted to do it so as to get it out of my way. Because being a theatre practitioner, this is the only language I know, or one of the many few languages I know. So I felt if I put it in theatre, through acting, writing it, I will be able to let go and let go fully. So for me, it was therapy. Uh, society, I knew they were going to give me a backlash, but surprisingly, yes, there was a backlash, but there was also the praise. The people who came and told me, Zippy, you've told my story, Zippy, that's what I'm going through. And it has opened a lot of doors for women to talk to me, women to seek help through me, and I am finding a totally new purpose by being able to help other women going through this. I actually think Oop Zippy should be read by more men than women. This story is not just about abuse in money. Whenever a divorce takes place, it is the result of a very passionate love. Because if the love was not that deep and passionate, then the feelings wouldn't be that painful for you to live. So that's the first thing I'd like to people to understand. That's why when you buy this book, it starts from the dating experience, which was very blissful. Then the bitter divorce and the very painful, the bitter marriage and the very painful divorce. So when a man reads this, I will give it another title, Guide of How Not to Treat Your Wife. <laughs> so, if there is any man here, give you a guide on how not to treat your woman, your wife, your mother, or anything. So buy this book for your child, for your boys, and for all that. It's not about feminism, it's about the reality. We call these things the feminism because we don't have any other term for them, but it is the reality. So boys, the young men, the big men, and the old men, <laughs> buy this book for yourself. In fact, buy two copies for you and for the other party, isn't it? Yeah. Some of the conventions that I see coming out of the book are one that men always provide. And I think that's one of the biggest fallacy of society, and that becomes a source. Mm -hmm. That is also a conflict. Because outside there, you know, you have this happy couple, but in, in the house there's a woman who's struggling to meet her needs and that of her family in, in the cover-up of, I am doing all this. The, then uh, the second fallacy is um, that, you know, we got you married. And I remember this from my society, one of the, and maybe Simi, you can put it in a better way, one of the things that society, our, our tribe says is, when you're married, you've removed the grave from my compound as a woman. So if you get divorced, there's no space to bury you. Basically, you're being told, if you go, you have gone. And I think this is, these are some of the very patriarchal and uh, uh, traditional issues that need to be broken because people need to feel safe to say, to say no to the violence or whatever is going on. Then uh, the other one was on what happens after divorce or when it's not working. And I think this one I loved uh, ZP for bringing it out. Women are not supposed to express themselves sexually. Yeah? You should be, you know, proper. If you're divorced, 
or if you're separated, you know, keep your legs together, basically. Yeah? But we have needs. Don't you have needs? Yeah? And we do get different tests, and things don't work out. In fact, I think one of the things that I encounter in my post-divorce life is men, the some of them feel they're doing your favor because you're used goods. Yeah? You're second hand and warm to you if you're coming with a child or four children in my case. So Zippy has managed to break that secrecy or that, you know, don't talk about the sexual feelings, don't don't date so how many men are you changing, settling with someone and whatnot, so that you're keeping the morality together. So I think for me those are the three things that she broke or she has managed to execute in her book about the taboos or the society's expectations of the behavior of a woman in a relationship and after a relationship. Gender-based violence is an issue that has been affecting all women globally. It is not a Kenyan concept, it is a global concept. And let me just say, gender-based violence is not even about just women. Even men suffer. But the disproportionate uh, vulnerability of women and girls is alarming. But the ones who suffer most are women and girls. The moment a woman leaves her, leaves her home, she's a prostitute. And that's your, is it your second name? Or it can even come before your name. And so because you don't want to be that prostitute, you want to keep it. You want to endure the pain, the suffering. Women look at it and it is about my children. My children will suffer if I leave this house. But you forget that the children will suffer when you're there, even when, before you leave. It is better when you leave because you'll have a reason to be comfortable and able to take care of your children. So many women are looking at, I do not have the finances. Where do I start from? How will my mom, who's been in marriage for the entire life, view this? How will my society look at it? And it has become an issue to all the women in the society. Because they're looking at what will come of me, what will be of me. Does it mean I'm going to start it again? How do I bounce back once I get these issues out there? So they're not going to speak about it. They'd rather enjoy it, and in the end, women are suffering and women are dying. I don't want to tell you as KHIC, I will tell you to leave your marriage. I will not. Why would I tell you to leave your marriage? Because marriage is a technical issue. The moment I tell you to leave your marriage, I have a solution for you, don't I? But I may not have a solution for you. I want you to have a solution. The moment you decide as a person to leave your marriage, or to leave that abusive marriage, you will have a reason to start it over again. Yeah, so those are some of the conversations that we had last evening during the launch of uh, Zippy's book. It's a very, very nice book. Here it is. So grab yourself a copy. And when you're buying, you might probably consider buying for somebody else as well, because it's very, very insightful. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.